Hey everybody, welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Monday, September 17th, and I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Paul Wontorek. And we are joined here in the studio by Eric King. Hello all. Welcome oh, back, double Eric. Hand. Double yes. Hand. yes. yes. Lots, of, lots of Eric Because FaceTime. we have two fabulous guests. We have two fabulous yes. guests. Terry Kelly and Edward Stoudenmeyer. From Stoudenmeyer. The, Stoudenmeyer. Stoudenmeyer. Am I saying it wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Edward Stoudenmeyer. Oh. Well, there we go. Yes, and Terry Kelly from the National Tour of Anastasia. They're here to chat with us about the tour and all sorts of good things. But first, let's get through today's top five. That's Theater Hall of Famer Cicely Tyson to you. Very aggressive. <laughs> wow, that was super aggressive. I wasn't ready for that. Um, yes, yeah, so there's a Theater Hall of Fame. You know, it's at the Gershwin Theater. When you go see mm -hmm. Wicked, you walk by it. It's like yeah. there's headshots and mm -hmm. things up on the wall. That's the Theater Hall of Fame. And there are eight new headshots up. Yes, I congratulations. Guess. I don't, I don't, I really, we don't really understand. It's a little bit of a mystery how this actually happens. Right. But there are amazing people in the Theater Hall of Fame. Yeah. Uh, it is, of course, for lifetime achievement in the American theater. Uh, Joe Mantello, Cicely Tyson, David Henry Huang, Christine Baranski, Rene wow. Abajonwa, uh, playwright Maria Irene Fornis, mm -hmm. and playwright Adrian Kennedy. So they will actually be honored on November 12th. Uh, there'll be a ceremony. I guess that's when the headshots go up. Okay, gotcha. The I was going to say. So it's so not just you have to like walk around week, and spot them. Don't look them. for them yet. <laughs> but Joe Mantello might be there because he directed it. Uh, let's see. The event will be hosted by past inductee and five-time Tony-nominated actress Dana Ivey. Dana Ivey's never won a Tony. Really? Is that wow. true? It says five-time nominated. Oh. That needs to be fixed if yeah. that's true. Uh, and also um, James Houghton, the artistic director of Signature Theater, who we lost in the last year, has right. also been yes. honored. So um, congratulations, all you Congrats. famers. Congrats. And the West End is going to be getting a touring production pretty soon. Fame. Who doesn't love? That's the best love? you got. Right. <laughs> There's You're, a lot of lyrics. Do you know the song <laughs> Fame? I was just about to be like, Fame. Maybe like, it's going to live forever. <laughs> I'm going to live forever. <laughs> so, yes, Fame, fame the show the that time. will live forever. <laughs> um, so it's had a hit UK touring production, but the show is going to sit down at the Peacock Theatre in London's West End for a while, happening in fall 2019. It will begin on September 11th, and it will play through October 19th at that, that theatre. Of course, you know the plot of Fame. I have it here, but... I don't think you need me to recount. You know it, right? Yeah, we all it. know it. Yeah. Will Fame Heist. the musical ever play Broadway? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it you... played off Broadway. Right. Never made it to Broadway. Why not? I mean, there have been a couple of like. There's been a TV show. There's been a movie. Where why why hasn't it played Broadway yet? I don't know. Um, this this production of Fame is directed and choreographed by Nick Winston. Casting will be announced at a later date. But yeah, if you haven't seen Fame, go see Fame in the West End. It's like High School Musical. <laughs> oh, what a waste. <laughs> Um, and a Tony nominee has been replaced in Bernhardt Hamlet. Yeah, so this, this was a surprise. Yeah. Um, so Bernhardt Hamlet is, is in previews. Mm -hmm. And Paxton Whitehead, the fantastic Tony nominated actor, has left the production for health reasons. I hope he's okay. Um, he, his role, the role of Lewis, has been taken over by Tony Carlin, who was his understudy. This all happened last week on the 12th. Uh, Tony Carlin, previously seen, he's been on Broadway for three decades, yeah. um, seen in the Heidi Chronicles, Copenhagen, Mama, Mama Mia. Mama Mia? Oh, that just slipped in there. <laughs> yeah, Mama Mia. It went from like, I mean, done Copenhagen, a Mama, Mama, Mama Mia. Mia, you don't always get those like <laughs> next to each other. He's in high, bios. he's low, he's all over. <laughs> right. Constant Wife, Spring Awakening, Fish in the Dark, all the way, Junk and St. John. Anyway, uh, of course, Janet McTeer is playing Sarah Bernhard, and it opens on the 25th. So, welcome to the cast. Tony Carlin, and I hope all is well, Paxton Whitehead. And a certain show is getting a cast album. There we go. There we go. That was better. <laughs> um, so, yes, getting the band back together, of course, played its final performance well, at, yesterday the, was at the like Belasco the Theater. So, yeah. what else? Carousel? Carousel and SpongeBob. SpongeBob. It was a big, it was like a dark Sunday. It, was, Sunday. A dar it was a yeah. black Sunday on Broadway. Yes, yeah, so getting the band back together is no longer at the Belasco Theater. 
but you will be able to listen to it anytime you want with the cast recording. Uh, it will be available. It will be out September 28th. I'm not sure if that means like the hard CD will also be out. They on still that make day. those. They for, do for Target. For they Target. do for Target. Get the hard so, CD so will I guess also be you can get all of it out, or you can order on Amazon. <laughs> you know, whatever you. Um, of course, the score. The score is by Mark Allen. The show was directed by John Rando. It opened on August 13th. Began previews on July 19th. It will be missed. You'll be able to listen to it. Featuring Fun the show. hit, getting the band yeah. back together. The Look titular song. And if you do, yes, and if you don't want it, you can just have us sing it for you if you don't want to get the CD. <laughs> it's fucking well. right. <laughs> And the Emmys are tonight. <gasps> yes, it's trophy night. It it is. Well, Emmys, I mean, yeah. so many theater actors are getting so much theater work, TV mm -hmm. work, television work, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, this is sort of a big thing. There's so many uh, people that I mean, we know and love nominated. Andrew Lloyd Webber was just made an EGOT. So also tonight, because of the TV. there's another opportunity for Pasek and Paul yes, to EGOT. There that, is. That might happen tonight. It could, yeah. Because they're nominated because of a Christmas for Story Live. Christmas Story Live, right? Mm -hmm. For uh, the songs and that. Yep. Um, also, Mr. Darren Chris has a really good shot. I know. Of winning I know we're going and Emmy. rooting for him. We've been. Well, we've yeah. actually been talking it up for like a year. <laughs> ever when since it was first announced, he's been, said, he's, like, been oh, he's been planning it for Emmy. five years. <laughs> but I didn't really think it was a. And then I remember like last. Last week I was like, "Who's in this category?" And then I would realize like everyone's actually saying yeah. he will win. I was like, yeah. "Oh, he's really like the front." He runner. could, but uh, he's facing off against John Legend, who's in that category for Jesus Christ Superstar Live, and of he course, was incredible. He's nominated for the assassination of Johnny Versace, American Crime Story, mm -hmm. uh, playing Andrew Cannon. Let's who else? And there's some other theater people in that. You had Ricky Martin in that production, yes. who was incredible. You had Finn Wittrock in that mm -hmm. show as well, yes. who's fantastic. Judith Light. Judith Light. I think she could win tonight. She's uh, amazing. Let's see who She's else. Let's just go through it. Tony Shalhoub minutes. for Marvel's <laughs> Mrs. Maisel, Diana Rigg. She's, I mean. Everyone loves this Marvelous Laurie Mrs. Maisel. Laurie Metcalf. Kelly O'Hara. Yeah, for The Accidental Wolf. Got nominated Wolf. for The Accidental Wolf. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, who are some real theater people? Cherry Jones, back on Broadway, starting this week. Yeah. Jeffrey um, Wright for Westworld, who I yep. adore. He's incredible. Yep. Yeah, and Sarah Bareilles, and mm -hmm. all the Jesus Christ Superstar Live. Um, Tina Fey's always nominated. Yep. Brian so, Tyree Henry, who was just in Lobby yeah. Hero, nominated for Atlanta. So there's a lot of people to cheer on tonight. There are. And John Legend Indeed. could like double, well, not double EGOT, but get another Emmy for Jesus Christ yeah. Star Live in the acting category because he already won. So he produced it for, yeah. Because he produced it with Andrew Lloyd Webber and yeah. uh, Tim Rice. And that's how he got his Tony Award, too, right? Brandon Victor Dixon is also. Jitney. It's a yes. big chance to get the E, and the then you just e. got to get the GOT. Yes. If you don't have one. I mean, I think a lot of these people have some of these things. Right. So, yeah, here anyway, it is. Complete it's it. It's exciting. Very exciting. But Getting you know what? Thought. There's two very talented performers here. I'm going to yes. get out. Thank you so much, Paul. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Eric, why don't you tell us about today's very special guests? I'd love to. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got the Countess and the Common Man here with us today. It's Terry Kelly and Edward Stoudenmire, and they are about to journey to the past all over the country as Countess Lily and Vlad in the national tour of Anastasia. Terry Kelly has been seen on Broadway in shows such as Anything Goes, Showboat, Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Groundhog Day, The Boy from Oz, and Something Rotten. Edward Stoudenmire has been seen on Broadway in Wonderland and Martin Short, Martin Short excuse me, Fame Becomes Me, and has toured with Anything Goes, Beauty and the Beast, and Phantom of the Opera. Leave all your questions in the comments below, and please welcome Ryan, Terry, and Edward. Edward Stoudenmire. Did you hear that? I knew <laughs> I was. I was. I, was, w, I, was you, I got nervous at the end there when I had to. But yes, it should have been there. Edward von Stoudenmire. Oh. That would have been a stage. That would have been something fantastic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Something respectable. <laughs> <laughs> and Terry Kelly, how are you? How are you guys? We're we're doing all right. We're good. We yeah. Good. Yeah. We just came from rehearsal. Right. I we mean, we were sweating it out. Yeah. I was gonna say you've had some we... pretty intense weeks. Things yeah. are things are moving. Here we were just talking before you joined us. Schenectady, October 9th is when Anastasia the National Tour begins. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> if you're ready? not, I mean, we've say only been like, in rehearsal like a week and a half. Yeah, not even that. Yeah. yeah. Although we, just... we, we this morning we started running Act Two. Yeah. Really? But and? I mean, just the beginning of it. Right. But we did our big number today, yeah. and. I'm, We've got some crazy stuff yeah. to do in that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. In case you don't already know, these are Countess Lily and Vlad in the tour. Yes. Tell me, what do you love? What do you, what do you love about this show? Why were you eager to be a part of it? Why are you excited to be playing these roles? Take me through your Anastasia happiness. 
Um, well, right away, I fell in love with the score. I think the, the music is just Gorgeous. beautiful. And yeah. what a thrill to be um, getting to work with Stephen Flaherty and Lynn Aarons. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Darko, I'm a big fan of his. After <laughs> The Gentleman's Guy, that was yes, exciting. And, and my absolutely. audition was wonderful with him in the room, so I was excited about that. And then I, I finally saw the production, and it's, it's really funny. Mm -hmm. And it's a big, epic, sweeping musical, and I'm thrilled to be in it. And then... We had this act two thing yeah, that happens yeah. that's going to <laughs> throw right. everybody away. She I just mean, did her big number today in rehearsal, and then we so have fun. our number. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for me, it's, it's like, oh my god, goodness, all those costumes for one thing as a as a woman <laughs> right. to be able to wear those costumes, it's going to yeah. be insane. But just to be able to play a funny, you know, a comedian, it's those a kind of role. those great kind of old yeah. old school mm -hmm. roles, I call them. I love I love it when a musical has one of those because I'm always like, ah, okay, that's my part. <laughs> right, that, that'd right. Be, that'll be me. And, and people, I mean, the, the fans are just nuts about this show. I mean, ever since like it began, in our, ever since we found out about it, people have been so excited, so responsive to everything that's happening. Have you? What is it like to take all of that in to know that you know this show is in the hands of you know you guys now? Well, <laughs> you for me, it's, it's really exciting that it already has this built-in kind of fan base. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So you know that you're already supported. I mean, I love that, and I love that we're going to be bringing this story to all these people across yeah. the country. I mean, that's yeah. really exciting, because I know not everybody can come to New York and see it. Totally, right. You know, so yeah. for me, that's exciting. That's what they were saying. There's been a lot of social media saying they're so excited that we're going to bring this to their cities, because yeah. a lot of people can't afford to come to New York, mm -hmm. and so that's going to be... Super great to have people that are such fans already. Absolutely. Yeah. We were just hanging out just with, with Lynn Aarons yeah. and Stephen Flaherty very recently, and he talked about how when he was, he didn't get to come to Broadway, see a Broadway show until he was an adult, that it was national touring productions of musicals that helped him fall in love with musical theater. Were you were you able to come to Broadway as young people, or did you have, were you, you know, tour people as well? I was a tour person. I was a tour person. I My senior year of high school, we came on a high school trip, and so I got to see some shows then. But no, yeah. I think the first thing I saw was like the National Tour of Cabaret with Joel Gray. Yes. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I saw the Mr. Vedran Drood with I don't oh. know who. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's right. But you know, um, I came when I was 19, and I mm -hmm. saw the Phantom of the Opera and all that stuff, but... Yeah, touring was was, yeah. was where it was at. And you've been, you've both have participated in, in touring productions before. Yes. You're you you. What, how do you handle road life? You yeah. like it? Is it? It's exhausting. <laughs> I like it and I don't at the same time. I mean, there's there's challenges. You know, like yeah. you know, living out of a suitcase gets a little mm -hmm. hard because you know we all like to nest. It's been a so while for her. Let's it's been a while. Take, I'll take this one. <laughs> you take this one. I've mean, become a tour it. pro lately. I have not been off the road. I've been on the road for like five years now with Anything Goes. I went right. to Panama the yeah, Opera. And just left and back to Panama the Opera. Now I'm doing this. Um, I have my car. I have my dog. Mm -hmm. That makes me a very happy person. Yeah. Uh, I have a piece of home with me all the time. Absolutely. Um, and now I'm getting to play cities that I've already played and love, and I have friends there, and I've gotten into tennis, and I go to tennis centers, and I'm Look making friends this. there, and, and I play pickleball with the ladies. And like, <laughs> Hold I'm, on, I, you play tennis? I do. <laughs> I play tennis. Well, We're going to play tennis. Let's play tennis. All right. <laughs> I'll get you going, yes. So you know, I just try – I'm really excited to play some of these cities again. Mm -hmm. Right now, third and fourth time, I'll be playing some of them. So right. it's exciting. I have like a bit of a life there. I know where to go. I know where to tell the kids to go, where to eat, what to do. Look at that. Yeah. Well, so I guess I know who I'm I was say, you know, to, you know who to stick close to. I'm going to write a book <laughs> about the best dog parks, the best dog, dog you know? daycare centers. There's I, a market. I there is a market. <laughs> there is I think there is an actual market, market for market. this. Yeah. There is. Yeah, so that's absolutely. My two cents. So tell me a little bit about, uh, I want to know your takes on these characters a little bit. Tell us about Terry Kelly's Countess Lily. Well, I'm still finding her, honestly, mm -hmm. you know, because um, we haven't had a lot of rehearsal. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I was... Um, I went to the show last week and I okay. saw Vicky, which yep. was great. Oh, she's amazing. And yeah, she's yeah. so fabulous. Um, and I saw a lot of similarities with things like that. I've been thinking about. Oh, maybe I could try this. I'm like, oh, she's doing that. That's cool. You know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. there's a sensibility underneath, but I'm still finding her. I don't know. She's she's wacky. I love that she has two sides to her. That she's very proper and she's very much a part of of being a, a royalty, and she wants to hold on to that idea, but then she's right. got this wacky side when she knows mm -hmm, <laughs> she's absolutely. out with, the, with him and whatever. So um, I'm still trying to, you know, just still playing with stuff and trying to find find that wackiness, and yeah, uh, yeah so I'm, I'm just excited to play with this one over here. Like this. I'm so, do you, I was just, and tell me a little bit about what you were doing before yeah. me. I'm excited. Uh, it's neat to play a character that really has a giant arc. Uh, he yeah. starts out, I mean, he's just a mess, down on his luck, things are horrible, and then, 
they go through act one and then in act two he's gonna be dressed up in a fabulous suit he shaves he looks good he has a big number with her and yeah. then he's back to being a count again and hobnobbing with the rich and famous so yeah. that'll be an exciting journey I think to yeah all different levels to sort mm. of play yeah no it'll be and how did you were both of you did you both know you were going to be performers when you were younger or did you fall into the field somehow hmm it was Copacabana <laughs> in the living room <laughs> of my family home. I was that like, you was went to the Copacabana? No, 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 wow. No, like that the was original one theme. or the one that was... That was my number, my signature tune. <laughs> um, you know, I had the bug there. I got the bug in high school. Uh, yeah. I did. Uh, I played football, and then I was in the spring musical, and I just fell in love. The music man, I knew every line in it. Mm-hmm. And from then on, I was doing the spring musicals, and I decided to quit playing football and be in the fall play, mm-hmm. and then I went to school for it. And so high school's where I really got the bug. I had a great drama. I'm a teacher in high school. Still, that's still good friends usually, with her, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, that's usually like you have that amazing experience and mm-hmm. it's like, oh, I want to be with these people. I want to be doing this yeah. sort of thing. For me, I started as a dancer when I was little, like five years old, and then started tapping and started doing all that stuff and I was really super, super, super shy. Mm-hmm. And I like to sing, but only in the privacy of my bedroom, <laughs> not for anybody. And then there was a community theater that was doing Anything Goes, I Need a Dancer, so I was 13, I went, and then I got, got a load of these crazy theater people and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like these people. They're fun, and you know that lit the fire, and that was it. I started Absolutely. taking voice class, you know, voice classes and acting classes, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when I knew when I was about fourteen. I was like, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Right. And how were your were your parents happy about the the choices that you were you were making? Because you know sometimes yeah. parents can be a little yeah. oh they're nervous about. Okay. Were, were your parents very supportive? My of all mom that? was always on board. Yeah. With whatever I wanted to do, not my high school guidance guidance counselor. No, no <laughs> he was like you're not making good choices. <laughs> but my mom was always on board. How about you? Uh, not too much. No. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, especially like I said, I played football. My dad was yeah. a, a ex football player, a cop, and a coach, and they were pretty upset when I. Uh, quit playing and they're kind of sure. mad at my high school drama teacher oh. and uh, they developed I mean I don't mean to paint them a bad picture no, they, no, yeah. uh, they got to, to enjoy it more and my dad I, uh, I, I'm I'm the second I'm Edward Stoudemire the second Von Stoudemire the second and um, <laughs> uh, you know I didn't become my dad he was this big 6'4", 240 for ex-cop, ex ball player, but I sure play him a lot on the stage, and there's mm. a lot of blood in him as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dad is in blood too, so yeah, he he came around and he became a big big fan, and we got really close. He's gone now, but oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but yeah. we became very close towards the end, and I think he's very proud of what I was doing. I'm sure, absolutely. Mm-hmm. When you're when you're sort of prepping for a to take on characters like this or to be mm-hmm. a part of the show, are there certain things you turn to for preparation? Do you watch certain things? Do you listen listen to certain music to kind of help you get in the headspace of your characters? Um, I think about, like, for, for me with Lily and her physicality is to always remember that she did come, you know, she does come from money. Mm-hmm. And that there is that underneath everything, even though as wacky as I get, mm-hmm. that still underneath it all, she does know how to present herself. And there, yeah. there's still all that, you know, so there's that sensibility for me. And I, I'm, I'm reading up about about Russia, a little bit about that Russian right, history that, 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 well. that yeah. I hadn't really known that much about about it other than, you know, Anastasia was, you know, missing for a while. They didn't know, they didn't know where her body was and all that right, stuff, you know, right. that, so there was that whole mystery. So I knew about that, but I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, educated about how it all came to be, like the Bolsheviks mm. and all that stuff, but. No, yeah, right, yeah, but, yeah, no, but um, as far, I don't know, I haven't really done any other. Pre- I mean, <laughs> you guys, it is. I'm not gonna lie. I was trying to, trying to give you a little something there. Why am I smoking? <laughs> I don't even smoke. What is this thing? That just, you know, we think we're on a radio program right now. We're not. Let me tell you. <laughs> You're like Sarah Paulson on American Horror Story. She's always got a cigarette oh in her mouth. Maybe oh this God. is my Lily. Maybe Lily maybe, should have maybe a Maybe this yeah. is yeah. exactly, exactly. Out. We're still finding it. We are <laughs> early on. So I don't know yet. I'll I let you know when I find it. Today, but wait till yeah. I get to Greenville. <laughs> who were some of your Who were some of your idols, influences growing up? Who, which, which performers did you look at and say like, oh? Oh, this is yeah. I want I want that kind of a hmm. deal. Judy Garland. Judy, <laughs> I was just I was Judy Garland. Well, there's where that cigarette. Like, yeah, yeah, that's where I was just coming from. Everybody. Okay. Um. I grew up like watching those old movie musicals with Judy oh, Garland. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Gene really Kelly, Fred Astaire, mm-hmm. for me were big. I rented Damn Yankees from my high school library and would oh. dance Two Lost Souls in the living room. This is after Copacabana. This is the high school years. Okay. So I really got the high school years. The high school years, and I just this is football. Damn Yankees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I loved Carol Burnett 
I, oh, I grew still, up watching, yes, absolutely. watching those shows, but I had no idea. I was thinking of a very Carol Burnett vibe she, to she, you. I, I get I that a lot. I was, no, that makes total <laughs> Which sense. Which makes me happy. Oh, yeah. But I no, didn't absolutely. even think about it growing up. I just I must have just absorbed some of it, mm-hmm. you know, all well, that craziness. I, mean, I won her award at school, too. It's something we've talked about. You have an award? The Carol Burnett Award. I actually oh, won what, what, it was a Was it for football? <laughs> it was for football. <laughs> it was for football. It was for football. Yeah, yeah. theater. She sponsored a scholarship, and... She gave me money, and I took voice lessons with her. I just, you know, thanked her and said, what "I'm going to spend this money on my voice." So that's no, what I did. She's amazing. Yeah. She's absolutely incredible. Eric, what are what are some of the things that our yeah. viewers, readers, do they even care? Fans, <laughs> oh, no. Does it's anyone buzzing, care? If it's, if, it, if it's Anastasia, everyone's from care. Schenectady. Yeah. Um, <laughs> really? Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> Terry, yes. um, this I don't have a fact check to this, but someone's saying Groundhog Day closed a year ago yes, today. It did. it did. Do you have a, a memory from the closing or, or that show? that you'd like to share? Um, yeah, but I might get clumped. I know that. Oh, I love, I love that show. I still wear the... Okay, here's a little story. See this little earring in my third hole right there? In my third ear hole. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, we're live. We're this live. Is, this is online. We're live. This is yes. fine. Okay, third this, ear hole. this was a gift from our lovely writer, Danny Rubin, mm. who wrote the screenplay as well as our... As our um, Book. Book. Thank you. I'm here for um, you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, he gave, gave everyone in the cast and crew this earring. It's from where he lives, which is, uh, where is it? Uh, Google Arizona it. Arizona okay. or somewhere like that. Sorry, Danny. The American watching. Southwest? Yes. Okay. But it means light. and Because so, oh, our so sh- show was very much about light and finding the light mm-hmm. in the darkness. So he gave everyone this earring. I shoved it in my ear, that performance, what? and I... Did you already have? The I had a hole there, okay. but it had, I hadn't had anything in it for a while. This is also sounding wrong. This is also sounding wrong. But I remember that whole last performance. We were all very emotional, but my ear was like this. You feel your heart. And you know what? I have. I've only taken it out for a couple of things since then. I've always had it in. That's lovely. So there's that little story. Well, we miss Groundhog Day around here. If you're watching, absolutely. David would like to know from both of you which role were you surprised that you got that you didn't think you were going to get or didn't think you were right for? Countess Lily. No, I'm kidding. Rod Popper. Mm. You know, you you work so hard at trying to get them, and you got to tell yourself that you're gonna get it. So, mm. gosh, Santa Claus. I was a Santa Claus at like 32 years old. I was like, really, Santa Claus? Really? <laughs> I went out and got a faux hawk immediately, so I'd be cool. But yeah, I was a Radio City Santa Claus out in Cleveland. Wow, kind of hard to hide under the hat. The faux hawk. <laughs> well, I had to do something. I was 32 and I was Santa Claus for God's sake. <laughs> hey. I don't know. I mean, I think when I was younger and if I'd ever played an ingenue, it didn't quite feel right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I'd play Ado Annie and then I went and played Christine in Phantom. Yeah. Not Phantom of the Opera, but the, the Copet Yes in Phantom. Yes. So, God. I mean, I did it and it was, it was you know, uh, whatever, but I just never, I was like, really? Okay, I'm going to be Christine now. I've got to hold it all together. I can't yeah. be. I got my equity card playing Big Julie. <laughs> Can you believe it? At like 25 years old, they lost their big Julian. Like, oh, Ed Stoudemire, he can do it. We'll just put him in like some lifts and a big suit and he'll walk around talking like this. Let's go shoot some craps. It's going to ruin my voice for the next show. But uh, yeah, that's wow. well, I got my that, equity card. That might, yeah. be, that might be the one then. That, that might be the, be the one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, going off of that same sort of token, is there a role or a show that you were a part of that taught you the most about who you are as a performer? Was What role kind of like shaped you moving forward? You haven't. I gotta do the Scarlet Pimpernel. That was a mm, big thing Frank for me. Um, I I gotta watch Doug Sills do it, and he was a master, and it was it was a big education. And I gotta do some performances of it at um, other venues, and that was right. a big part for me. I, I carrying a show like that and a lot to say, and getting to be so free and ad lib and stuff. That was Such a, a that was a, that was a great part in, in my canon. Yeah, no, that makes know. sense. Oh, gosh, know? there's so many. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've done so much. Oh, there's so I, much. What do I, do I pick? How do I through? pick just one? No. Um, <laughs> no, um, I will say, okay, I'm going to say Judy Garland in End of the Rainbow. I played that um, in Denver. Mm-hmm. In, um, and this was like three or four years ago, I believe. I learned a lot about myself as an actress and how to how to how to have to do something that is so taxing and, and, and is about being an addict as well as being Judy Garland. So you had to to truthfully play 
how does someone who's on all these drugs and you know drinking too much, which right. I don't do, don't tell me I do because I don't drink too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> how do you play that and be Judy Garland and not do a, you know, do a like you're mimicking a bad, bad impersonation? Bad impersonation. Right, so yeah. I mean, I learned a lot about myself as an actor in doing that, and um, no, I loved, I loved that. Yeah. Them. Was it hard to get out of that? It is. After I, a while, well, I would it, it's a little hard. And, yeah. and I, I still find, I, I call them my Judaisms. I start doing them like this. <laughs> well, I mean, there's muscle memory. Or this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's just things that creep yeah. in that I find, because they just became part of sure. you know, who I was at that point. No, it makes sense. But that Absolutely. happens with a lot of characters. You find that when you find your character that they start creeping into, into your, your life. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Absolutely. crazy, yeah. Anyway. So I, well, I'm, I'm excited to see how Vlad and Lily yeah. creep into. You're gonna get there. She's just gonna be Judy Garland <laughs> straight up. <laughs> Carol Burnett would have made an amazing Lily. She, she would have, right? She um, are there any cities you guys are excited to visit, or any like foods you've been meaning mm. to try? Oh, I'm excited about DC because yeah. I really, I love DC because of all the um, culture there and all the the museums. Absolutely. And, oh, I, I'm excited yeah. about and that. And the Kennedy Center is like the Cadillac yeah. of theaters oh across the country. It's so gorgeous. I'm excited to yeah. be back there. For yeah, sure. you, and we have a nice month there. Yeah, yeah I've played it a couple times. The dressers too. there are so fantastic. I've dealt with those dressers. Venue, they're great. Yeah. yeah, the whole venue is so yeah. superb. Um, excited about Memphis, barbecue, go to Graceland. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you have yeah. amazing cities. Do you already have like haunts you already know you're going to go oh, yes. back to? Yeah. So in Memphis now, all the ushers come together and they have a big potluck dinner oh, for yeah, you yeah, between yeah. shows and it's that. amazing. Oh, wow. And then you can buy their cookbook and like, what? Tra- no. yes, oh, wow, I was going to say, that's such, I never even thought about, yeah, like all the different like experiences with different mm-hmm. ushers at theaters across mm-hmm. the country. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. So cool. I'm excited about Madison, Wisconsin, too, because I'm from there, and I've never I, played there. You're from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Wisconsin. absolutely. And I've never played the brand new theater, the Overture Center. I've mm-hmm. never been in it yeah. or played it, so I'm really excited about Look that. Look at that. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you both so much for coming on and chatting with us today. Sure. As we said earlier, the National Tour of Anastasia is beginning in Schenectady, New York, <laughs> on October 9th, before heading to Pittsburgh and so many mm-hmm. cities after that. Make sure you go check it out. Make sure you see these guys. They're amazing. Edward Stoudenmeyer <laughs> and Terry Kelly. Thank you so much for coming by. Yeah. Eric, why don't you take us out? I'd love to. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We are live at 5 every single day here on Facebook. You can also find these videos on our site and at YouTube. And if you like podcasts, you can always type in hashtag live at 5 into whatever podcast venue you use. Tune in tomorrow when we're talking to one Mr. Jason Robert Brown about his subculture residency.